I wanted to start this video off by talking about how the Great British Pound is now the Great British Peso. But that would be offensive to the peso, because the pound has absolutely collapsed over the last 24 hours. Oddly enough, it's not just because the dollar strengthened, the pound lost strength against major currencies throughout the world, not only Asian currencies, but even against the Turkish lira and the euro. But yes, it also fell against the dollar, but there's much more to this story. So what what happened? Like, how could the British pound be down over 6% in one moment before recovering? Some are calling this a 20-minute sell-off crisis, a flash crash, say some traders, as the currency of the British pound fell to as low as a dollar and three and a half cents per pound. That's incredibly low. We now have a 63% chance that the pound will be at a dollar, just like the uh, dollar to the euro sits, one to one, which is remarkable because usually the dollar is weaker than both of these currencies. I remember the days of the pound basically being twice as expensive as the dollar as a child and the euro being at least 50% more expensive than the dollar. And now they're both close to one to one. It's really remarkable. And these are the lowest levels for the British pound since 1985. But this is not just about the United Kingdom. What the United Kingdom and Great Britain are doing is kind of really interesting. And some are saying this is potentially what the United States needs to do. So let's talk about what's going on, why the pound is crashing, and why some say maybe this is what is coming to the United States. Now, on the other side, some do say that these new policies, including the Financial Times, are just straight up radical and a, quote, rebuke to prevailing Western economic orthodoxy. In other words, it's downright crazy. <laughs> so let's break down exactly what's going on. Now, I'm gonna keep this reserved to just now in this video and then maybe very briefly at the end. But as you know, today is the 26th of September, which means in just four days on the 30th, the prices for the courses on building your wealth have a coupon that expires. That is a link down below. And we have a wire deadline for those of you accredited investors interested in househack.com. Keep in mind, we've got a big announcement and some big changes coming to the Path to Wealth course. And uh, the best hint I could give you is you'll want to be in before we announce those before the 30th. All right, let's get in. And then I'll see y'all in the course member live stream after this video post. Okay, so what's going on? Well, in September, that is this month, Liz Truss took over as a prime minister and started her work. And some are saying this is a danger to the United States because, boy, some of the things they're doing are a little bit of a wake-up call to the United States that maybe the United States needs to do this as well to solve the problems the Federal Reserve and our government is facing. We'll see. So there's this guy who was appointed to the Chancellor of the Exchange, kind of like the Treasury Secretary, by Liz Truss. His name is Quasi Quartain. He had three major announcements uh, that he announced a Friday and over the weekend added some context to. And these three major announcements, these could be some of the wake-up calls for the U.S., but I'll recon reconcile this as we go through it. So first, he introduces his plans with statements like, this is the beginning of a new era, and help is coming. And one of his first policies is something that you would more likely expect during a time of an energy crisis, where the expectation is the average household has to spend about 6,500 pounds on electric, or well, gas, per year, or energy per year, I should say. Uh, that's pretty remarkable. Imagine spending somewhere around $580 a month for gas and let's just call it and electricity. It's pretty remarkable. Uh, and so the energy issue is a crisis on its own, but what's said after the energy crisis is quite interesting. So quickly on the energy prices, they plan to set a ceiling for how much the typical household is allowed to spend on energy. It'll be capped at about 2,500 British pounds. Uh, and they'll be sending essentially stimulus checks for 400 pounds this year to a lot of families. And so not only are they going to support households, but they're going to support businesses with an energy business relief scheme to reduce gas bills for all businesses. I always think it's funny that they call 
plans or bills, schemes uh, in the United Kingdom because a, a lot of folks in America hear scheme and they're like, it's a scam. <laughs> uh, anyway, number three, uh, they they also plan to support markets in, in the energy space, uh, basically by bailing out the energy sector. And, and their goal is to reduce inflation to 5%, not 2%, no, to 5% solely by attacking these energy crises, which Okay, I mean, that would be ambitious since you're over 9% right now, and that got a lot of applause when that was announced. After all, this is the worst energy crisis they're facing in generations. And they expect to spend about 60 billion pounds on this, and they're going to be adding to the debt, which we'll talk about what that means in just a moment. Uh, I mean, in short, it seems like they're doing lots of borrowing and uh, and less, uh, and, and then taking in less money. So <laughs> it's always interesting how that'll work out, uh, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, the big moves, and these were, in my opinion, the things that really hit the pound, but there are also things that were a wake-up call to the United States. The, uh, the, the Chancellor of the Exchange talks a big talk about how they want to reform the supply chain while at the same time being more responsible with their spending, and they want to cut taxes to not only boost growth, but reform the supply chain and encourage people to work. In fact, one of the biggest issues that they're having is almost exactly what we're having in the United States, where Federal Reserve Chairperson Jerome Powell says, look, we've got like two job openings per person willing to work. We need more people willing to work. And so over in the United Kingdom, they're saying, hey, well, if we need more people to work, why don't we cut taxes for employees and factories and, and businesses? So businesses build more plants, buy more land, and people keep more of their own money. Boy, oh boy, that sounds like a wonderful thing, by the way, for the United States. And so, anyway, even though it's not, it just would be nice in the United States. At least it seems that way. There are some issues with this. But anyway, he talks about how we have to unleash the power of the private sector and that the tax system is not just about raising revenue, it's an incentive structure. And that higher taxes hinder enterprise and slow investments. And so we want to make things easier and simplify the tax code. After all, when businesses invest, they make it cheaper for individuals to buy goods and services, and that brings down inflation. I mean, just like, full stop for a moment, this is actually really incredible and really, really interesting because that is not what you see in like modern day capitalism, like here in the United States or even in Japan, where you have much more of this argument of uh, let's let's and, and this is much more in Japan than even in the United States. But you've kind of got this this spectrum here. Uh, you know, there's there's so much of a call in the United States that. We got to focus on green. We got to focus on social inclusion. We got to focus on uh, diversity. We got to focus on, on, on a lot of things uh, like raising taxes to increase the social safety nets. So that way government can be bigger and do more when, when the United Kingdom is now saying, no, let's not have the government do more. Let's let business do more because if businesses do more and people keep more of their own money, they'll actually want to work and they'll want to expand their businesses. This is interesting. So what are they actually doing? Well, they're applying some of the biggest tax cuts in 50 years. They're keeping the corporate tax rate at 19% instead of going to 25%. The United States is at 21%. He says, we want this country to be entrepreneurial. Uh, we want this to be a nation of entrepreneurs. I mean, these are like huge statements. They want to remove unnecessary regulations on businesses. And this is an interesting one that I thought they're going to get rid of the duty free system for tourists. Have you ever been to the United Kingdom or Europe where they're like, oh, if you keep this receipt in this envelope, you'll get your taxes back that you paid. They're like, we're getting rid of that paper system crap and we're going to do a digital system because we want to encourage tourists to come here. And we're not going to raise taxes on alcohol. But most important, which is entertaining, but most importantly, what they're going to do is they are going to help people by cutting their taxes. In fact, they have an upper tax bracket of 45%. And starting November 23rd, they are just killing their upper tax bracket. They're completely getting rid of it. And now the upper tax bracket will be 40%. They say they want to remove this tax bracket, this 45%, basically lowering taxes for people who make more money because they want to incentivize growth so they don't go into a recession. They want to encourage work, but they also want to reward work. And they think this will benefit the entire economy and the entire country. They say that high taxes damage
damage the incentive to work and damage the incentive to buy homes, which they're also reducing some stamp duties and taxes on many of uh, real estate purchases. They're increasing the no stamp duty limit from 125K to 250K. And for first time home buyers, they're moving it, uh, that is a no stamp duty tax, from uh, 300,000 to 425,000. Now, but the most important thing here is they wanna encourage people to work and invest, not only spend money on their businesses, but spend money on real estate and pay less money in taxes, keep more of their own money, corporations to keep more of their own money, but they also wanna kick people in the behind as well as spend more money. Now, I think some of these things are remarkable because they sound really, really good, but they wanna spend more money on childcare, immigration, digital infrastructure, and physical infrastructure, including roads and airports and ports at the same time as simplifying the tax code. I mean, all of this just sounds like really, really amazing to some degree, right? Uh, but there are consequences to all this. But their solution for solving the unemployment problem is probably the most interest and pro interesting and probably one of the most big wake-up calls to the United States. If the United States does this, maybe we could actually solve our crisis of not having enough workers. And wow, this is a brilliant move. And I hope that the United States politicians and the Federal Reserve are listening to this. Listen to what the United Kingdom is doing. So first, they say we have more vacancies than we have uh, unemployed. And that's the same issue that we have uh, over in the United States. We have too many job openings, you know, two job openings per one person who's unemployed. And so what they're saying is we need to encourage people to join the labor market. We will reduce pay for unemployed who aren't fulfilling their obligations to look for work. In other words, if you don't prove you're actively looking for work, your social safety net is going to start shrinking. Wow, this is intense. In fact, their universal credit, which is kind of like a social security, quote, will face benefit reduction if they don't work. And, and this quasi guy sounds very much like Boris Johnson too. So like he leans forward, he doesn't have the hair, but he's got the voice. <laughs> will face benefit reduction. I can't do that accent. I, it's, it's really incredible. But anyway, now, I mean, just consider all of this. I mean, it seems very remarkable. It seems like they want to spend more money on simplifying the tax code on encouraging tourism on infrastructure both digital and physical and increasing child care benefits so they want to increase all of these benefits while at the same time they want to encourage growth by lowering taxes on businesses individuals and real estate purchasers so it's like spend uh more money but bring in less revenue wow that seems and sounds really great, but it also seems problematic. Like, how are you gonna balance this mess you've created now? And so anybody who says that the British pound's crisis and the reason it's falling is just solely because the dollar strengthened, first of all, has not looked at charts that show the British pound losing a value against a lot of currencies across the world. And second of all, they don't understand how absolutely mega and large the changes that are coming to the United Kingdom actually could be. Now, it's a total experiment because at this kind of time, the way Quasi is talking is as if we're back in the bottom of the pandemic. He's kind of like, look, we need to do more now because the risk of doing more now is lower than the risk of doing too little. I mean, those are phrases that we heard from like Democrats and Republicans in America during the COVID pandemic. And now you're hearing it, it here, all for the benefit of trying to increase GDP uh, and create growth. It's, it's essentially their, their massive growth plan. And so what could actually stand you know, to solve this British pound crisis? Well, most importantly, what you need now is Andrew Bailey over at the Bank of England, which kind of like the Federal Reserve, to wake up. Last week, they only raised interest rates by 50 basis points rather than following the Fed a day later and doing 75. At the same time as having kind of like a soft money printer, stimulative-ish uh, Federal Reserve, essentially, the Bank of England, while taxing less and spending more, it awfully seems like you're trying to debase the British pound. And folks, that's exactly what traders started pricing in. So now you know the reality of what the heck is going on. And if you like my perspective, join me in my daily live streams where we do analysis on fundamentals for companies or on real estate. I answer your questions. 
Take a look at the courses on Building Your Wealth, link down below. All of them come with access to the private live streams. And if you're an accredited investor and have not considered investing in Hack yet, check that out. You can be from the United Kingdom in case you want to invest. You just have to prove that you are accredited, at least until we open the non-accredited round. Keep in mind, this is not a solicitation. The solicitation is the private placement memorandum found at househack.com. Thank you so much. Goodbye.